and welcome to another episode of Integrated Awakenings. It's me, Maria, and today we are talking about Divine Masculine Rectification, aka Daddy Issues, Divine Daddy Rectification, and this is part three of three of the Holy Trinity Holy Family series, and if you haven't listened to my Inner Baby Child episode and Divine Mommy Energy Archetype episode, I do need you to listen to those episodes. It's the the two that went before this one because I do want this to land in the best way possible and I love you. I need you to listen to those before you listen to the rest of this so that you have the right context and we're operating under the same assumptions. Okay? All right. I love it. Okay, so If you fully finished your, like, week around exploring this divine mother archetype within you, I can already feel that you've probably unraveled some chains, some baggages around the masculine archetype. Why? Because your mother had a relationship with them. Your your feminine friends, feminine being, feminine care was influenced by how this masculine energy led them or maybe your mom was very masculine in the first place so there is uh interweaving of these two energies yin is in the yang yang is in the yin we move between them quite often and for the sake of last week we were biased towards one but it doesn't mean that we didn't realize some things for your masculine right right Okay, now, I know that some people might trip up with, like, the words feminine and masculine. So for the sake of this podcast, I do want to emphasize that this is yin and yang energies. So basically, yin is the receptive nurturing aspect of how your inner child needed to be nourished and supported. Yeah, like mama bear energy. And the masculine is more of a, or again... Yang, the yang is more of outward focused pushing energy, almost like a hunting energy. Like, think of a, for example, like a lioness hunting for prey, right, to feed her cubs. So, more of this external hunting energy, okay? Yeah, a little bit more of a warrior energy, a little bit more of a protector energy, like a. I will protect the den, I will protect the boundary, I will make sure that the clan is okay. So think of like the alpha wolf, yeah? (laughs) Because it's like, they're the head honcho of making sure everyone is safe. Yeah, so this is like the difference in terms of texture and quality. Now, I understand a lot of people get tripped up about the gender, so I want you to really tune in to the energy because these qualities might be assigned flipped. For example, your mom was doing a lot of the bark, bark, defensive, protective energy, and a lot of like the emotional world of your household could have been done by your dad, right? So I do want you to divorce the idea that this needs to be assigned to like gender heteronorms and really allow like for you to see who is it who taught you to protect? Who is it that taught you to be strong? Who is it who taught you to occupy space in the world? Yeah, th- those are like square-ish masculine yang energies. Yeah, so for me, it arrives like a cube, right? Whereas the yin is more of like a circle slash a sphere, Meaning there's no edges. Whereas the yang is like, there is an edge. And it's like a brick that you can build stuff on. There's like boundaries to it. Yeah, so if this was like geometry or physics. Squarish energy versus spherical energy. Yeah, yang energy versus yin energy. So this I'm trying to give you like these modes of thinking. That really helps you um, kind of lean away from gender stereotypes that might be limiting like how you're perceiving this so anyway i could already feel that the people who have already gotten the grasp of the flow of the feminine 
I can already feel that the people who have a grasp of the feminine episode will already have an idea of how the flow of masculine rectification would look like. So, if you want it to be spelled out, I will give it to you. So, it's basically tapping into your inner child and then how did they want to be defended? How did they want to be felt that they were secure? Felt like that they had the right to fail and also the right to try the right to better and best themselves the right to do hard things yeah and really imagine the perfect yang protector parent energy that would couple like the perfect complement to the divine feminine you just explored like what would be the divine couple of that energy and really just explore it in your system so is it more of like a fortress is it more like an eagle is it more of like a staff or a glaive right and then if you don't like location slash animals you could totally go for you know celebrity crushes or even like these people who you wish were your daddies right you wish they daddied you why i don't know they just feel so secure right? They feel like I could lean on them. They feel like they would pay for what I need, right? So again, tapping into that kind of energy, rooting into that signature and really giving it to your child. And again, retroactively going from like your earliest childhood memory and then running through your upbringing being like, oh, what if I was like perfectly supportive, what if I could fail and what if I was encouraged? What if somebody uh, buffered my strength? Meaning, they in Tagalog sa sanggahan ka. Meaning like, um, you know how when you're building a, a building, there's like scaffolding. There's like these temporary buttresses that help you build yourself up until you've like solidified yourself. So while I was using the walking metaphor in the last episode for this one, it's almost like you need a mold and you need a scaffold before you harden and become strong, before you find your own footing, before you find your own foundation and structure, right? So I'm using a lot of Capricorn imagery because Capricorn is very elder masculine energy. So the thing is somebody needs to hold that for you. And it's very, it's less about embracing and more about structure, like buttressing. And the thing is, what if that was available to you in all of your ages? So you could go from like, for example, your earliest memory is four years old up to now, right? Especially in the early adolescence and the transitioning in the young adult era, like your 20s, 30s, like that. What if you had that perfect buttress, Right, And I know that a lot of people who have kind of messed up dads or have this daddy angst, especially if you have like um, a religion that's heavy on the divine father coding and, you know, maybe you had a falling out with that masculine energy coded God, that you might feel like, oh shit, I don't have support. I don't have foundation. I don't, you know, if humans can't do it and then this false god I had couldn't do it or like, you know, you you could end up a little bit jaded and very scornful and isolated. Honestly, sad too. <laughs> because it's like your ch- your child, your inner child's like deprived of this nutrient of this masculine support right that buttress and the thing is i really want you to have that energy regardless if humans or for example your religion failed you yeah in the same way that your inner child deserved a nurturing mother regardless of your angst with the mother archetype your divine like really look at the pain of your divine child being deprived of a father energy like seriously look at it seriously looking look at it crying look at it being hurt look at it being isolated from the world because no one will fight for it 
or no one is proud of it or no one can like really showcase that child's light look at that look at that fucking sad story (laughs) stare at it and i want you i want you to show up for that kid because the thing is that we tend to make excuses for our weaknesses of why we can't be strong because we think that we want to be saved or we like being a victim it's quite convenient and the thing is that kid has been crying for you for your strength for your support and i know that we could we could blog about it we could complain about it we could whine about it but it's never going to be perfectly loved until your divine masculine fully comes online. Until your sense of defense, strength, fortitude, integrity, sovereignty comes online. Like your inner kingdom comes online and be like, oh no, I'm going to keep you safe. You know what? Queer people get this. because Okay, so I'm queer. So queer people get this. When I want to protect, like, a feminine energy, like, I have a crush on, like, someone who's very feminine, one of, like, the first phrases that comes in your mind is that I want to protect her. I'm going to keep you safe. It's very natural. Like, it's this natural instinct that comes out of love. So, so for example, somebody who's more, like, of a feminine being and have, like, uh, like, have this adoration towards this you know, masculine boy or, like, masculine man. It's like, oh, I want to I wanna spoil you. I want to ravish you. I want to gift you, right? So there's this thing where it's like, um, I don't want you to overthink or ape these energies. I want you to try it out and see how your divine masculine slash protector slash daddy manifests like what's the script of your daddy right so if my daddy is like i want to keep you safe or i will fight for you if that's like my the script i like what's the script you like right is it i'm not gonna leave right so for example you were abandoned a lot maybe that's like your juicy sentence i'm not gonna leave or Maybe it's the, I can be strong for the both of us, yeah? So especially if you always needed a teammate, right? If you always felt like there wasn't, um, if you always felt like you were always reaching for help and you weren't being salvaged or like, uh, how do you call this, being met. So... My point is that I want you to be able to hear the script of your divine masculine, the one, the, the freaking vitamin and nutrient that your inner kid needs, and really stare at that kid and be like, I want to give that to you. Because, I don't know, man, because if you stare at that kid and really listen to that ask, that divine ask, and not give it, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to convince you to do it. <laughs> Because that's really, like, my only pitch for you in terms of, like, how do you evoke this out of you? I'm like, listen to your inner kid and listen how much he's begging for you, right? So, um, try out the script. Try it out. Feel the change in your energetic body. Feel if you feel like a mountain. Feel if it's stronger around your limbs, like your legs, Feel if if you are touching your inner child, right? If you if you change the pitch of your voice, like just just notice the energies and amplify again. Like the process I shared last episode, go for a hundred, two hundred, three hundred, get to a zillion, go across dimensions, go across lifetimes and versions, and really focus on giving it to yourself. I don't want you to solve the patriarchy. I don't want you to fix your physical dad or your brothers or even like the masculine of like your abused friend. No touch. Don't. That's not your business. No, no. You are a portal. You are fucking multidimensional. There is so much healing potentiality within you. And I'm telling you, 
please address you first, the gate of you first. There is no influencing or sharing or gifting towards other people unless you are fully rectified. So no touch, no touching, no fixing, no, don't fix boyfriend, don't fix girlfriend. Okay, don't, no, <laughs> stop, <laughs> stop. I really want you to dig into yourself. I feel like people really, um, so because the process is already familiar, I do want to explain the parallel lives, past lives, other dimensions, timelines thingy that I keep giving people um, so that you have a context why we're doing this. Okay, so in the previous episode, I mentioned how people could have experiences of their past lives and their parallel lives as a mother. And therefore, they could tap into that energy. I do want to explain that as much as these good qualities are transported, it's probably going to be familiar that these karma slash trauma slash cycles are also transmitted. So for example, if you've always had an energy around being, say taken advantage of by people in power or you're like a person in power who's always been a little bit greedy about power and you keep repeating the cycle it feels like okay here's the thing i need to speak to two people so basically the people who've never experienced this multi-dimensional hopping thing and the people who have experienced it okay so let me address the people who haven't okay so for people who haven't basically in deep subtle states so let's say regression or deep dream states or deep deep trans states so this is why the ayahuasca people and the um plant medicine people are wild about this is because the veils between these lives are like dimmed and you can access these uh the reason why they're divided is because waking up to the linear timeline is also kind of like a test yeah sorry (laughs) it's kind of like you realizing that you are beyond this timeline is kind of like a test and the thing is when you wake up from that meaning you're willing to access you from beyond this timeline like you as a soul yeah not you as an ego persona like your birth certificate name you just welcome the possibilities of other time frames, right? Now, the reason why I don't give past life readings and stuff, or, well, I do in a way if it comes up for you, but I feel like some people go into it as entertainment. Like, oh my God, maybe I can blame like a past life version of me for this. Instead of claiming the deep realization of how big your soul is. Do you see what I'm getting at? It's like you're missing the point. (laughs) I feel like when people entertain past life ideas of themselves, they get entranced with like the fantasy element instead of rooting into soul this is why some disciplines like yogic disciplines like Sadhguru would say that why would you tap like the karma of your other life if you can't even handle the karma of this life i'm like yo he's valid he's right (laughs) if you can't handle this one why would you unravel another one (laughs) but the only path i can really share is mine right and the thing is my reality is that a lot of my other lives did come online and usually it was via dreams and the thing is i would like i would remember lifetimes of me as a man as a spy as a warrior uh as a dad as a trainee as a woman right or as a <laughs> even as a non person right so i would you know dreams of being like a fox or, or, or a rock right so the thing is your concept of self, like lean yourself, will really just dissolve once you have more of these experiences. And you'd have this generosity in terms of like what healing is, what your soul's power is, and what exactly are you rectifying? Yeah. So what I'm trying to share with you right now is that When I say that you're rectifying the divine masculine within you on a soul level, what I'm saying is that 
because you've experienced this strength of meeting your inner child in this life, you have this willingness to transmit this kind of fortitude and strength to all your other lives. And to receive all this fortitude and strength from all your other lives. You see what I'm saying? Yeah? Because there is a version of you that's like a little bit ahead of you who could guide you. But there's also a version of you that's a little bit like lagging that would benefit from you. This is why I keep talking about how time is like funky and soupy and like it, it curves a lot. It folds a lot. Once you get to these dimensions, because there will always, that's why I say parallel kaleidoscope fractal version of you, because there, what is past? What is future? What do you mean? Right? And when you get to that level, it's like, are you sure? What do you mean? There's really no forward and back. The compass doesn't just lie on one dimension, it's like a 5D chess compass. Okay? So, what I'm trying to say is that. If this isn't in your reality yet, or if this is in your reality, the essential thing that needs to melt is the idea that you are alone. Because I feel like when people talk about feeling lonely or feeling like they're not connected to source, like your crown chakra doesn't feel like it's connected to your other selves, to your lost aspects, to your other parts, it's basically, how do you say this? It's, it's like you're playing the most limited scope of a game. It's almost like you have, for example, the game is like full of a lot of equipment. And it, you have like, the, for example, you have like a basic sword in an RPG game. It's like you play the whole game with just your basic sword. Of course you're going to feel like shit. Because <laughs> the game wasn't supposed to be played with just your sword. As just a page, you level up, you gain more equipment, you gain more capacities, you you remember more things that you already knew, right? So, for example, your class in RPG is like a knight. You're going to remember the skill sets of a knight. It's already listed down. You just need to remember. You need to you get the energies to get to that, Okay, so my point with these, um, it's very simple instructions in terms of like, I'm willing to send it to these lifetimes and receive from those lifetimes. It just kind of erodes the idea of um, dividing them. I'll be honest, though, I'll be uh, I'll be honest. A lot of people do get overwhelmed with a lot of of quote-unquote Akashic karma. Wow, I am digging deep with these episodes. Okay, a lot of people get hung up with these Akashic karma. Why? Okay, because sometimes you were tortured in a different life. Sometimes you were um, evil. <laughs> you know, sometimes it wasn't fun. Okay, but I think one of the thing is that it's usually a little bit more pronounced version of whatever you're feeling now because we're really interstitched like think of sense eight like that series um but anyway if you haven't seen that it's fine i'm explaining it so for example for me i do have a lot of lifetimes where i am like an oracle slash witch slash so so the thing is a lot of these abilities came through when i was able to tap those lives but also all of the witch burnings all of the scorn, all of the danger, all of the um, evil eyes I had to put up because of the how you would take advantage of that energy in those lifetimes echoes to here, right? So I remember when a lot of like my uh, psychic senses came on, I really had like this deep fear of revealing myself. And it wasn't just from this lifetime, it was from other lifetimes. It was my other lifetimes trying to keep me safe right? And the thing is, I needed to be able to heal, rectify those timelines and be like, oh, I understand the powers and like the universes of those timelines to really understand why I had to do that, why I had to self-protect that way. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that, so for example, your strength comes online and it's like this unbelievable strength. And it's like a strength from a timeline where you defeated slave owners because you needed to free slaves and then what comes to you is not only strength but also anger but also justice right 
but also a remembrance of deep leadership, right? So what I'm saying is that when you remember and tap and rectify these stuff, it's usually not just one thing. It it unravels more. If you did the last week's exercise quite sincerely, this would have already been happening for you and this is just the explanation, right? Okay, yeah. But so the thing is, so for example, for feminine, there's like a lot of abuse. I'm sorry. It's like, it's not just in this timeline, but other timelines as well. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that when these things come online and you rectify it, what's funny is one minus one equals zero. You think that you need to change your approach in terms of love, in terms of loving the aspect of you that's like reaching for you, talking to you about like power abuse. But the thing is, the only thing you need to do is like love and accept it, like kiss their little forehead and be like, It's okay now. Yeah? You remember how you treated and like showed up for your inner child? All those aspects of you that are reaching for you, that are in mild pain, some version of pain, treat it like your inner child. Treat it like those scorned, um, abused aspects, repressed aspects, uh, corrupted aspects, right? Meet it like that fucking kid and love it. I love you, I accept you, understand. Right? Because the thing is, I feel like a lot of people sometimes um, overbloat the drama. Meaning, oh my god, I was a slave owner. You know, I could never forgive myself, blah, blah, blah. And then, and then they kind of stew in this guilt-shame loop for a while. And I'm like, okay, here's the thing. When those facts, images come online for you, you know what they're asking for? They're asking for your love. They show up to get a kiss on the forehead. They show up like your inner kid whining, and then they just want to be swaddled and feel like they're protected. Okay? They're not there to be... I mean, maybe sometimes you could psychoanalyze it a little bit, but I really want to say that when these parts and aspects come online, they're wanting to be loved. Okay? Happy, sad, angry... Uh, bitter I need you to trust yourself that you know what to do because you did the inner child episode you did the divine feminine episode you know that we are doing one thing we're showing up right so even this divine masculine energy imprint you're just showing up you're doing the same thing I know that this sounds so deceptively simple, but I'm telling you, this is why I'm trusting you with accessing these different dimensions, versions, lifetimes. Because here's the thing, you're doing the same thing. You're just sending love. You're just sending energy. You're sending understanding. You're just accepting it and releasing it. And the reason why I do want to pitch the dimension hopping, other than, duh, this is like a spirituality account, is because... A lot of people, you're, okay, here's the thing, huh? A lot of your traumas and your hang-ups and your lessons in this lifetime weren't even born in this lifetime, yeah? Like, I, I have friends and clients who I'm like, okay, most of your major beef and karma isn't from this timeline. So it's almost unfair that you can't access other timelines to rectify a thing that happened in other timelines. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like, why do you get the bad shit, but don't allow yourself permission for the good shit, right? For the nice leverage, right? And the thing is, especially if, um, especially if the echo of the trauma is a little bit lighter here. So for example, it's like slave abuse in a different dimension. And here it's more of like just, you know, an annoying boss. It's not as like crazy as the other dimension. There really is like, it's like a portal gate opportunity to easily, gracefully align, rectify, make right this energy and lesson. It's to be brave with the lesson and really look at it in the eye and be like, okay, I love you, I accept you. I'll be with you, I'll be strong for you. I'm, I'm going to pick up what you're putting down, I'm going to learn this lesson, right? And the thing is, 
when you do this dimensional uh, comparison thing, right? This dimensional teamwork thing. A lot of the issues can be easily resolved via you in this timeline. How can I say that? Because you're remembering it. <laughs> they wouldn't they wouldn't give you how do I say this? It's almost like the baton wouldn't get to you on the relay run unless you're the one who's it's time to run with, right? So you wouldn't have access to these if you're not the quote quote chosen one. If you're not like the easiest point to release this. Yeah, and the fact that you're on a healing journey, the fact that you're open to healing timelines, the fact that you're open to like accessing your soul means that baton pass, you're actually a good leverage point. Mm, do you see that? <laughs> do you see that? Do you feel that? You're actually a good leverage point. So the thing is, this is why a lot of like my meditations for you all guys is to meditate express expand this fortitude this yang energy this pure love staying energy the sovereignty this buttressing and then just echo it across all dimensions yeah now for people who are like okay maria you've convinced me with the theory you okay i kind of understand like the method of this i've done enough of the feminine stuff but what if what if i still need a little bit more guidance to step into this right what if it's like maria i'm i'm kind of having like a lot of karma around this so i need like extra help like wh- how else can i get into this okay so A good tip would be to imagine your inner child really as a boy. Really characterize it as yang, masculine, boy energy. And really have the intention of it's like the inner child of like more of your lifetimes, not just this timeline. And the thing is, I want you to journey to him, to that kid, right? And I want you to spend time with that kid in the same way that you did the inner child episode, right? And I want you to ask him what kind of masculine support he needs, right? So if it's more fortress, is it more oak tree? Is it more like martial arts stuff? Yeah, what is what is being rectified within him? Or maybe he's like really tired, like it's a really tired kid, a really traumatized kid, and he just needs someone who's like a stable bed, right maybe he needs more oak tree mountain rather than warrior energy everybody's different just just really listen to him and see what he really needs and i want you to just sink deeper and deeper into this energy and amplify more and more this energy okay so again sink into the depth of this core Amplify the energy and the integrity of this core. Okay? I don't want you writing stories. I don't... Maybe you're... Maybe you have, like, some natural processing that will happen. But this... It's almost like a posture. So, okay. You know how, like, that feminine mother energy is kind of like the softness with your heart? It's like a specific kind of tenderness towards like your inner child of like oh, okay i understand like there's this it's almost like subsuming it's almost like you're sinking like a like a kid in the shop out shop house like a bun <laughs> it's like a bread bun anyway um they're like sinking into the dough of you right it's like a softening right the thing with masculine yang root energy is it's very like it's a posture because it feels like a really straight spine. This is why buttress. This is why kingdom. This is why trees are like a good image for it. Because just like a really strong spine. And it doesn't bow in like defeat. It doesn't crumble as much, right? The, like bowing devotion is more of like a feminine quality, okay? So the thing is that posture 
try to give that posture around your inner child. What if that spine integrity was 100 trillion times more strong? What if they were, what if these bricks held you up? What if your body didn't fail you, right? What if, what if you felt like you could lean on this mountain, on this very, almost like a bull that will not shatter, and then you think of all of those material qualities that you feel like is like the opposite of fragile glass, right? And you just buffen, you buffen that weak, fragile quality of that internal lost boy. Yeah? Until he trusts that structure. Until he, it's almost like he's wearing, what do you call that? The, it's almost like he's wearing shin guards slash, what do you call that? It's kind of like when you're recently injured and you kind of need like that wood support and then a little bit of like walking stick support to be able to like gain your posture again. Yeah. So I really do. I know that this is like a lot of emotional work, but on an energy level, this is very physics. This is very geometry, metaphysics, um, energy dynamics kind of thing. So weak leg, injured leg, boy who's like to mushy cannot stand up for himself and then just just put all those stirrups put all those like strong postures right and then almost just chime those postures outward okay okay stand for him and then allow it to echo and i know I can really feel that a lot of people want to process slash make this more complicated yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's almost like, oh my god, what does this mean about my, like, my business or like, uh, what what does this mean in terms of like all oh, my expectations for my boyfriend, blah blah blah. No, 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 no. Okay, I want you to just feel like you can transmit the supportive energy to any weak parts of you, and then keep multiplying it to every direction. Okay. And then when you have more energy, more stability, more of this posture, more of this structure, all the things that you will do to rectify like your masculine wounds, for example, you have like daddy drama or like your boyfriend drama, it will come from clarity, stability, confidence, independence, and not from like desperation, right? I need your kingdom to be built. I need you to be solid before you move. Okay? So even before you touch your whole processing shit or like try to physicalize all of this stuff, I need you to energetically feel all of this first. Yeah? And same with the divine feminine thing. This is something, this is actually best when you are waking up, like with the sun. Right, It's like you're coming online into your body and it's becoming more solid, solid, solid from like deep sleep. Okay, anything that's weak from you, buttress, buttress, buttress. Yeah, if you are into sports, if you go to the gym, if you do anything that's quite like, um, that will really enliven your energy dynamics. So maybe this is Qigong or something for some people or maybe even golf, I don't care. Uh... As long as you're sensing into your body and your energies while you're driving, you know, I don't, I don't care. When do you, when can you visit this energy and then really try to amplify it? So I do this a lot when I do gym sessions. Like I really celebrate my divine masculine warrior archetype energy. How can I strengthen my spine more? How can I feel even more protected and how can I transmit this to every version, dimension, lifetime of mine? Yeah, and you can feel it, yo. You can feel you can feel the fucking blessing. So just explore it. Have a time to explore it. 
okay? And then the clarity arrives. In the same way that the feminine, I wanted to emerge out of you, like these, these realizations or these processes, and you're, you're like, oh, I noticed that my, my feminine expresses itself this way. I want your actions, right? Your, the physical actions that come from this healing to come from like this emergent quality of clarity. I don't want you to think about it. I want you to just realize it. Yeah, it's different. It's different. It's, it's a little bit more uh, rounded slash big picture. I want it to be clear rather than derived. Like, of course, this is the obvious pattern rather than something you had to architect out of nothing. Like a bunch of excuses to, oh, okay, this is what's going to patch up my problem. No, I want this to come from like a clear dragon eye, eagle eye seeing of, oh, I am so stable that I actually have more space and I actually see what must be done. And it's not coming from ego of like, oh, I want to be more proud or more strong or whatever. It's actually you just realize it has to be done. Your kingship is so solid that it's like, oh, this is just what is true. This is what's essential. And there's no, walang labis, walang kulang. There is no excess. There is no uh, lack or scarcity or detriment. It's just right doing. It's just right. Yeah. And that's like the quality of like a really mature, healthy masculine. And I know that I'm talking about this right now. But if you meditate on those qualities and exercise it with your energetic body, these realizations come to you. Like they are experienced, they arrive. So I don't want you to have a mental relationship with this fucking daddy energy. I want you to feel it. And I know that some people are like, oh, I want to be initiated. I want to be, you know, I want, I want like some cool daddy mentor to like talk to me. I'm like, no, this is it. <laughs> this is it. You decide to do it and then you welcome it and then they come to you. Okay. And just like the episode before, maybe you want some examples. So some good daddy energies are like Archangel Michael. Metatron is also really good. Yo, some people love the classic Jesus, right? So, and then again, uh, characters you like. What else is like a good masculine? For people who like a lot of mythical creatures, dragon energy. Very, very, very strong. This is is very, very, like, very flame of Rekka of you need to have a pure heart and not be full of bullshit to, like, um, tango with this energy yeah uh, there's also you could also go with bear right like a masculine like bear energy birds moose mountain yeah okay i think i've covered most of it right oh okay also a note some people like metallic stuff so maybe don't be afraid to go for like uh Voltron or say or say Voltus 5 right so this um a lot some people have like these strong like programming energies right metallic sci-fi ish so some people attach to sci-fi images a lot and this is why like young boys like Gundam okay so the, so the thing is um if you are attracted to those kinds of archetypes this is what Metatron is like a close like Metatron is very metallic so that's also like a good pitch oh wow I forgot about Seraphim okay so Seraph is also like a good masculine daddy energy uh what else Raphael too honestly so angels are non-gendered but because they're really good with structure, I would code them towards strong masculine uh, texture. You know, it, like if I had to pick, I, I would say they have some masculine leaning, especially like the void, void slash, you know, Michael stuff. So, yeah. Um, what else? I, I really feel like I should give more examples. 
So in the Philippines, there's a lot of feminine mountains, but a lot of bigger mountains like the Yosemite and the United States or Kailash in India, Himalayas, tend to be more masculine because it's like holding ground, right? It's like father mountain energy. So a lot, I know that my Filipino listeners might not resonate with this as much because of a lot of our mountains are quite feminine coded, but in foreign countries, father sky, father mountain, right? So even in Japan, the the archetypes around mountains and sky gods tend to be male, right? So whatever is true for you locally and personally, especially personally, what's your personal faith like? I do want you to lean into those energies and explore it. If you have questions or if you're like, oh, I want you, I want kind of like specific help to like transition this and unpack this. Like, for example, you want to do a ceremony for more of your versions or you're like, oh, my God, I have like a male kid and I want to rectify this now. Right. And I want all the help now. You can schedule a session with me. Um, just book online, email, comment. Um And yeah, if you find this helpful, like, subscribe, forward it to your friends. I do really, really want people to rectify, like, their masculine energies. And remember my whole thing about don't try to help other people unless you fully helped yourself. That's the thing. The only way another masculine energy is going to listen to you is if you are in your full authority and sovereignty. So, for example, you have, like, an older male guy and they need to trust your advice, like masculine energy advice, if you're not in your integrity, they're not going to buy it. Okay, this is really why I'm pitching for this. And even when you're guiding like smaller, like younger energies, uh, for example, the masculine of like a younger girl, or even like a, a, like a, like a cousin who's like not matured into their full masculine, you can't, tell them that you're like a superior man yo it's not that's not how it works that's not how it works it's it radiates off of you that that sense of integrity radiates off of you so um and the only way that they could really listen slash even model themselves out of your own healing is if you actually had your healing you see what i mean right so if you want to heal like these men around you or the inner men around the women around you or the queer people around you if you want to rectify like masculine patriarchal systems around your work and stuff why would they listen to you why would why would they be led by you if your masculine wasn't fully rectified and healed if he's crying in the corner feeling weak from like all these patterns timelines them you know karma no one's standing up right no there's disempowered nothing's gonna happen there's no change there's no there's no ushering of a new kingdom yeah so i really need you to build yourself up before you even try anything okay and then if you're gonna go try stuff i'm so excited for you i love it go do that i'm a fan okay all right that's all i got for these trifecta series of the holy family i hope you really enjoyed because i feel like this is one of the most core deep essential aspects that people really do heal and rectify because honestly yo if you fix these three things within you like in a very deep sincere way i feel like every time you hear someone's problem or you kind of engage yourself in the world you already have like such a that's like a robust tool that you could always use there's always like an inner child that's like needing to be heard there's always like more love being more authority or sovereignty more integrity that's being needed in the situation and as long as you could freaking transmit that you're always coming from wow i may ma i can give something right? I'm not coming from, holy shit, this is too much, right? You're actually coming from wholeness. You're actually coming from fullness. Yeah, so I'm really saying that these wheels of like this holy family thingy is going to be applicable to you. 
even if you live alone, even if you don't want a family, even if you don't even have a lot of relationships, this is going to be helpful and useful. Yeah. And if you're like into like a lot of relationship work and a lot of like family setups, oh boy, this is <laughs> this is going to be super essential and fundamental for you. So um, I'm rooting for you. I hope you really explore this. Do comment though, uh, especially I'm going to post like IG quote pullouts and videos, I think. And I do want to hear your stories around the unraveling of this. Yeah, so because I do really want uh, everyone's inner child and divine femme mask like healthily come online. Yeah, I really do want that for the whole world. So anyway, that's it. And I think there is a few more episodes for this first season of Integrated Awakenings. But I, I'm really happy that y'all joined me and are so willing to listen here and do the work of healing. And yeah, yeah, we look forward to the new episodes or the next episodes. So ciao.